big push to get everybody trained on something called crisis intervention training. And it's to address the very thing that you brought up. In the crisis intervention training, officers in a classroom setting review video, <coughs> review, uh, hear from like psychologists and doctors and discuss assessing signs for of mental health issues. Because sometimes, sometimes mental health and crim criminality can interlock, right? But understanding that there could be a mental health issue, taking a step back, say from like your traditional law enforcement point of, uh, law enforcement follow-up, right? And giving time to allow that person to express their thoughts and their feelings, and sometimes in being patient and giving that person an opportunity to, to express himself, the officer and the indi individual can come to a, a better solution, right? If that makes sense. So there's crisis intervention training. Uh, there is a, uh, and that is being pushed out citywide, all 10 stations. There's crisis intervention trained officers at every district station. Uh, so I'm not, did I answer your question? Yeah, you answered my question. So I, that's basically what I know, not right. the homeless. So thing. yes, there is training. There's a difference, but I, I mean, they might be homeless too, but when they go out and they, and, and they may just grab somebody sure. or, or start sleeping in a car somewhere and right. they break an entry or <coughs> go into a building and, and, and then they start going crazy and, come yes. up and they start talking real nuts, some officers, a lot of officers in my day, I, you can't talk nuts to them. You talk nuts to them. They're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to beat you with the club back in the day. You know, they're going to beat you down. But it's, it's, a, it's a losing game, but I don't think it's fair for the mental health. That's why I just wanted to ask if, there's, if they were increasing any of that for the mental health. But I see a lot of that going on. Yes. It's, it's really bad. Yes. So, so the law of yesterday was not the last resort thing for the police department. First things first, the person is shouting out and control of the act on the street. They, they yell at him and they cross him by even cursing at him and tell him to keep shut up. And then, and then so I rushed him and slammed him to the ground, and that was their way of containment. Um, so I was just was wondering, if, uh, have, are y'all doing something different now besides doing particulars? Well, in line with this crisis intervention training, the police department has undergone tremendous reforms. We hear about it, we read about it in the paper. Uh, the Department of Justice did an overview of the police department, and they made 272 recommendations. And a lot of that has to do with some of the stuff that we're talking about right now. So I think 2018 SFPD, it's a compassionate police department. It's a more understanding police department. And efforts are always made to work with people. And we understand people can have different issues like mental health at times. So yes, I would say absolutely there's been a change. The, the, the second question I wanted to ask you, well, there's actually two more, but I'm just asking one. Now, I particularly, when I, put this, man, when I was younger, down in, I'm not from, but when I was down here when I was younger in the 70s and stuff in the 80s, and I was saying people were shooting dope, right? You didn't just see it out there on the street shooting dope. They'd be going into a bar bathroom, while after that was built, they'd be going in, 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 into the cubby hole somewhere, into a, 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 one of these $5 night, 10 or building bathrooms and, and doing slamming their dope, right? And that's how it was done. We're outlining the laws out there by, by, by Harper, Harper. But the thing is, places like that, but now I'm seeing a lot, and it really disturbed me. And I don't have no, but it, I just, I don't like seeing this because there's kids, I know there's kids here. There's people, there's tourists here that, that, that the city has, needs tours because that's a lot, a lot of our, you know, right. a lot of our money generating right there. Yes. So, and, 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 and they come down and I see them going through here. And it smells like doo doo. It smells like hay. And, it's, huh? and it's so bad, especially when it rains. I smell. I can't handle that. But 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 the thing is, uh, they they. I, I know when they're coming through here, and they're seeing this stuff. You know what I mean? And and, and I see it alone. I, I is there anything? Is, is the police department doing anything? I mean, I don't think they should go to prison for it. No, but they, something's got to be done. I don't know if that has to do with. I think well. Back in my day, you go to prison for that. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, and I'm not stating what I think should or should not happen, but I'm gonna surmise individuals who may have been narcotics users, 
would hide themselves to avoid going to prison, like you just pointed out. Yeah. Today, right. do people go to prison no, for that? No. I don't have to answer that. You guys can answer that. I, I, right? I thought you said crap. No. So, therefore, I think that's why there's like a shift with those that uh, ingest narcotics. There's not a need. Well, I'm not going to say there's not a need to hide, but hopefully, you guys understand what I'm trying to convey. I think therein is the deterrent. Whether it's right or wrong, or people agree with it or don't agree with it, it's not the same as it was when you're talking about. <coughs> years ago. What I can do is, um, both for the mental health issue, uh, because I know the health department has a mental health crisis team, which is on call 24-7. Um, and what I can do is, I can reach out to the health department, to the director's office, and I can reach out uh, also to DPT, SFPD through Commander Lazar's office, to try to get people here to specifically talk about mental health issues. And what I can also do at the same time I'm at DPH is talk to the director's office about um, uh, getting people in to talk about substance abuse and um, the outreach being done to help take people off the street. One of the things that is coming down the pike is um, safe injection sites. Glide Church has stepped forward and has offered to become one. Um, and it's, that's in the process of being done now uh, to set up Glide Church, as, as far as I know anyway, from the email I got. It's being, it's been worked on to being a safe injection site. That's one issue. The other part is I can try to get somebody in from DPH um, uh, on uh, the uh, uh, drug issues within the neighborhood as well as narcotics from the police department. And um, because I know a lot of issues around narcotics strictly has to do with funding. And um, with the draconian cuts coming to the state from Washington and whatever happens in Sacramento this next budget year will determine a lot of what funds our department gets to combat crime. So what I can do is I will reach out to the people um, on the uh, uh, director's level to get in information and people in over the next couple months to address some of those issues. And also if I could add one last thing. Regarding, you brought up the issue of individuals using drugs in public, in front of children, students, residents, right? So if you could imagine, or if I could walk you through a process if, let's say you observed, let's say Mr. Um, Mr. John Doe is shooting up with a hypodermic needle in public at 123 Eddy Street. Okay, so you call it into the police. The, the call gets dispatched and the police goes to 123 Eddy Street. They're gonna t talk to Mr. John Doe, who's ingesting drugs in public. So if Mr. John Doe doesn't have like altered mental status requiring medical, like immediate medical care. Okay, so he's not gonna go to a hospital facility. If Mr. John Doe doesn't want to go anywhere or receive any services, um, such as say like uh, substance abuse services, which they offer through CJC, the court on Polk Street. Okay, so he's still at 123 Eddy Street. He has narcotics paraphernalia, which he used to ingest. Maybe he has a little bit of narcotics, which means he could be eligible for, say, a misdemeanor citation. This is how, so I don't want to talk about Prop 47 too much, but this was the shift, right? So in the past, a couple of years ago, if someone had narcotics, they would get arrested, and they would get booked into the county jail, and they would see a judge, and a judge would say, Mr. John Doe, I believe you have a problem. I think you need to get substance abuse and that person would be mandated to go get substance abuse, right? So the mechanism was they were arrested, they were brought to, they were booked in to custody, they saw a judge in the morning, they were arraigned or whatever, and the judge decided you need help, you need treatment, and that person got treatment forced upon them by a judge, right? In, in lieu of going to jail or doing jail time. Now, with our current laws, 
the officer who goes to 123 Eddie to see Mr. John Doe about him injecting drugs, who has narcotics paraphernalia and maybe a little bit of narcotics, at most exercising the maximum um, letter of the law, the officer could write that person a citation, like here's a misdemeanor citation for drug paraphernalia, illegal narcotics, right? And Mr. John Doe would receive a citation, the encounter would be over, because there's nothing more that Mr. John Doe wants, and there's nothing more the officer can offer the, the individual, and the officer would go on about his patrol duties, right? So at the end of the day, what has changed? He's, Mr. John Doe is still there. Mr. John Doe may be still addicted, or he's addicted, obviously, if he's using drugs. So he remains at 123 Eddy Street, and there's no mechanism to get him help or to get him do you see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Is that clear to everyone? I, I hope I'm explaining it well enough for everyone to understand. Yeah, so. Can I ask one question? Now, isn't it even adds on to that misdemeanor? I mean, I, I heard a big guy ounce or less it's a misdemeanor of speed and all that stuff, right? Cocaine, whatever it is. It's an ounce or less. If it's less than an ounce, it's a misdemeanor. I, I it's not actually based on weight. It's based on other factors. And the distinguishing line is, does this person have these drugs for simple possession because they are, are gonna use them for personal purposes? <coughs> or is this person in possession of sales. these drugs for the purpose, sale. with the intention of sales, or did this person actually sell? So if they actually sell it or possess it with the intent to sell, they get booked for felony drug violations. If it's simply because it's for their own use, they're gonna use it later for just themselves, it's a misdemeanor citation. Yeah, I understand. But the thing, I, now, now, if they're doing it in front of like a, a school, I, mean, I, I can't believe a church is gonna actually, I've never heard of that, allow someone to go in there and, and shoot dope inside of the sanctuary, but, but uh, well, I've done a lot of good stuff though, don't get me wrong. Right. right? But, but I just, that's, I'm having a hard time shuffling this, whatever it's called, 50-50, I'll stop cranking, I'll do speed, I'll stop, I believe in abstinence, but the thing, the thing is, and then they're passing out the syringes left and right all over the place, and the more syringes right. they pass out, the more out there they're using because they're going to care, and that's how I look at it. That's just the way I look at it, you know, but I'm not making an issue out of it, but I just want to know if people are using out there in the middle of the street. Now, if they're by a school somewhere within about, I mean, I think it's about 100 yards or 50 yards, and they're doing that right in front of, isn't that another, a whole other separate charge they're all going to go to jail? There are what they call enhancement charges, having to do with the sales of narcotics. Yeah. So there are, yes, the answer is there are enhancements sales. for sales. But, but, but for Not using, for, 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 for doing for the mere usage, right school? is it indecent? Absolutely. But is there a specific violation for that? The answer is <laughs> No, okay. there's not. The, 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 uh, the penalty with the signs you see around the neighborhood for school districts only is regard to sales um, uh, and being caught selling. That's the only thing penalty enhancements are for, uh, because they're part of the criminal. They're part of the court system. They're not part of the uh, street officers' duties. <laughs> Before everyone walks out, just we'd like to have our time. Okay. 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 Well, back. thank you everyone for uh, hearing our presentation about what we do down at Tenderloin Station. To close, I would like to invite all of you to A, follow SFPD Tenderloin on Twitter, if you have it. And number two, to invite all of you, if you're not already doing so, to attend the Tenderloin Station monthly community meeting, which is held the last Tuesday of every month at what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay, great. So it was very nice meeting you all. Uh, thank you for letting me participate, and uh, we will we will meet each other again. They still okay. Excuse me. They still have the, the, the supervisor going to those meetings over there. Which one? Which meeting? The, the, the last Tuesday at one. Well, Tuesday. Captain Fabry personally hosts that. that Jim. Huh? Jim. Jim. Or whatever the name is. Jim. Oh, Jane Kim. Jane Kim, yes. yeah. So, so you, did she still go there? Yes. I, you know what? I have not been to one. I've only been here since the end of October. And the captain told me. Yeah. Right. So he, okay. the captain runs those meetings. Okay. Thank okay. you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Can you say Okay. Right now, what's happening? Right. Um, if you okay. want to turn the lights off, the light switch is rolling. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah.
The police, the police community meeting last Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. at the police station's community room at 301 Okay. I don't have much time left on this, so it's good you do this. Okay. What you can, Susan. Okay. Shall we start? Yes, please. All right. Good evening. Thank you so much, Mark, for inviting us to, uh, to your meeting uh, so we can have a chance to introduce the project that we will be uh, presented um, in the city for approval. Uh, this is 600 Van Ness. The location is, uh, you must know that it's a corner of Van Ness and Golden Gate where the old McDonald's site is. Um, probably you, you know that. Yeah. Um, and uh, my family has a small office building right next to the McDonald block. And so we've been neighbor with McDonald for the last 30 years. So we've been in the neighbors for all this time. Um, so we have a chance to purchase this piece of uh, property and we're gonna build um, 168 units of apartment. Um, and we are going to, uh, so when we are trying to get this, uh, uh, before we purchase, we actually reach out to the school next door, the Tenderloin Community School, because they, we ask them what's their concern, what they, uh, what they are uh, wishing for, that for uh, a new development next door to them. And they say they want to make sure that we don't, cast, we, we don't cast too much shadow on their playground, because the children would like to have a lot of sunshine play. And they want to make sure there's a safety in the Elm Street. It's a narrow alley uh, between the building I mean the school school building and our our lot, uh, so we don't have a, a traffic, uh, we don't have any loading in that place, and uh, they also were worried about. Uh, they wish that they can still have a view of the city hall dome, uh, and so uh, we we have uh, complied with all their wishes. We even voluntarily sacrifice 20% of buildable area. You know how valuable the land prices, but we feel that in order to be a good neighbors in the community, we have decided to do that. Um, and we have uh, the Alexandria who left already, we have TNDC, we met with them twice. They want to make sure that our design, um, that not just a very nice side would be look pretty, you know, and the back side is kind of plain, so they want to make sure that the side, especially facing Tenlonoi area, will be as unique, as beautiful. So you will see our design uh, later on. My architect here, uh, Bill, is gonna uh, walk you through that you'll see every site. It's a, it's a very architectural, uh, architecturally uh, 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 unique and, and beautiful. Um, so I think, you know, I will not, uh, we have me with many community members and they're very happy to, to be here. And I wanna say this, I was very, how much involved that you are with the community. You really take pride of your, 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 your residents here. So really, uh, that really impressed me. And, you know, we, we want to be here. We want to say that we are not just a member of the community, but we are here, want to be a partner of the community. So we are taking proactive attitude. Mm -hmm. So we, hopefully, after we give you an introduction, we can have your support uh, for our project. And um, thank you very much. And we'll open for questions later after Bill. Give you through the project. Yeah. Well, as uh, Kenny mentioned, uh, my name is Bill Higgins, by the way, uh, nice. architect, architect mm -hmm. international. Uh, the site in the yellow is the former site of the McDonald's, and just the things you're talking about happen there every day uh, once they close McDonald's, the needles. Yeah. I mean, everything just that was ground zero for this part of it. This is the, on the edge of well, the edges of Tenderloin, and it's on the Van Ness corridor, but it's, it's in the Tenderloin. And it was happening right there. And Kenny, uh, through the working very closely with the school, that's the Tenderloin Community School, where you have kids coming every day from kindergarten up to the middle, middle school ages, plus the teachers and faculty dropping off uh, on Elm Street, which is the alley between our site and the school. And so these activities are very uh, disruptive to the school, uh, dangerous. And so the pledges that uh, Kenny made as part of the commitment to the project was, as she said, there were four things I'll reiterate, it was safety uh, uh, on Elm Street and, and uh, no traffic on Elm Street, uh, a, uh, 
minimize the shadow on their school playgrounds. All those green roofs are the playgrounds for the school children. Of course, it's very hard